All right, good morning, guys. Grandma. Well, on another job right now. Till that other job gets moving. Um. So I thought I'd show you that real quick. We've uh, gone through, scraped up the walls here, plastered a bunch of little holes, and uh, we caulked all around these the frames everywhere, all around the ceiling, all throughout the bedroom, as well as out through this living room. And today I'm going to show you. This is what it was like before. all those holes in there. Well, what looks better, huh? Like that or like that. Now these are these tongue and grooves can be kind of tricky with those upper gaps. So I'm going to show you how to get that done all nice and neat and professional before we move on to sanding and then we'll get priming. All right. Whoopie whoopie woo. They're finding one. Clean up any Lucy's. Lucy Gooseys. Now a lot of times, you know, doing sheetrock, it's pretty hard to get these corners perfect everywhere. So as a painter, just run a nice cock bead down it. And that just smooths out the corner, makes it look real clean. And as for these cracks up here, you gotta have a nice angle, not a whole lot of gap or uh, width on the exit there. And you gotta figure out the right squeeze with your finger and then dip up in there. You won't, don't wanna too, do too much in there, otherwise, you're in my way, camera. Otherwise, you'll have to clean it up. <laughs> then you take a five and one, and usually it's this side. This side's pretty worn, you can see. And first, you just run it like that, get the correct angle. Oops, a little too much there. If you have too much, it'll squeeze out this way. And when you paint it, yeah, it'll give a, it's on a different plane, so it'll look bad. I saved this for you yesterday because I didn't have a big enough ladder to get up here. Alright, and then run my pinky one at a time and always like try to twist away like I don't want to twist up towards the wood you want to twist down and that keeps it from moving up and you just smooth out those lines in between the triangles and smooth out that clock line everywhere a little more right there There's a problem with coming in as a second painter. You gotta deal with everyone else's mistakes. And uh, sometimes you can't fix it. Like, oh, look at this. That wasn't me. But it'll be a different color. Okay, well, that's that. Let me finish this last little piece up. This is all I gotta do. Like I said, I didn't have my big ladder yesterday. And then, uh, get primer. Or, I mean, sandy. Alright. Got her done. Got to take a step back and look at it from a distance. Make sure it looks good. You didn't miss anything. You know, different angles. Uh, yeah, I fixed one little gap up there. Anyhow, that's that. Say we've gotten everywhere. All around the doors, all around the windows. Get rid of all those cracks. Not going to do the shelves. Get rid of all this. 
Anywho, uh, all these little nail holes and everything else like that, little divots and places where the feet and everything is kicked. I have uh, gone in like that, so it's time to get sanded. I'm gonna use this bad boy right here. Take the wrist. Safety first. cover plates the hole is too big so you can see holes behind the plate you know kind of like that so you just he didn't usually I just throw caulk around it he didn't want that because he's gonna put new ones on so uh, we just threw in some more mud to uh, what's my dog barking at to smooth it out for him Now these guys work really good. They'll save you the poles. Don't get this kind that I got for painting because there's a little bit of play always in it. Um, the kind between these two. See? So don't get the kind that click out even though they're nicer-ish. They're more expensive. Get the kind you can twist, which I'll show you later. Then you don't get that little play when you're painting. bigger holes you just stuff it in as much as you can and then it's going to shrink in so it's going to take more than one application so on the second day you sand it down and you fill it back in again I use this pink stuff because it changes color when it dries and you want to do a bad enough job to where you see that you have to uh, fix it <laughs> You know, resand it. Otherwise, it's very possible that you'll forget it and you'll start painting it. You won't see it until you start painting it. And you're like, ah, oh, fuck. And you gotta go back. So, but there's another one way down there. Okay, all right, that's how you do that. Now, get the primer here. This is the one you want, stain blocker. 
the blue. If you're trying to cover cover up other colors or stains, you know, grease stains, hand stains, crayons, fresh, uh, fresh drywall. This doesn't look like it needs to be mixed. It's pretty dang fresh. Sometimes they do, especially if they're oil based. Now, I'm going to use this as a cut bucket. Now, when you pour these guys, you always want to pour away from the label so you know what it is. Let's see how that works out. And then you want to add some of this, just a little bit. <clears throat> To the paint and the and the primer. This thins it out a little bit to where it doesn't leave streaks as easily. You need a, a supple brush as well. It just makes it go on a bit smoother. Wash this off and we'll get moving. In uh, dry climates or when you're not using this stuff, you want to get a wet rag. Stretch her over there, keep her nice and moist. You always want to have a wet rag on your, on your person when you're painting. Um, the thinner, the finer the rag, the better. Now, when you're doing this by yourself, it's best to do one wall at a time. And uh, that way the cut marks match the uh, roller marks. Of course, you don't want to leave any grooves. That's why we added that flow trawl. We got a supple brush, but it's just, it's better. Better practice. All right, let me get started here. Now, when I'm talking about marks, see up here? That's what I'm talking about. That's why you do more than two coats, and you get that flow trawl out too. And supple brush. So you don't end up with that. See the difference there? You don't know. All right. Let me keep on moving. Get back to you. All right. Just finished cutting it in. Got my brush under a wet rag on top of the can. We got freshies out. We'll go over this real quick. When you're doing this, you want it to roll forward. Okay. That way, if there's any splatter, that it's going to go forward. If I roll back like this, then the splatter's going to come out here. I'm going to step on it and spread it. Plus, right here, you know, it could, it could uh, squirt up. So always go forward like that. Always. Get her nice and even. Maybe take off a little corner if you got some. I got a wet rag on me. I get a little extra in. We want the texture of the roller over the texture of the brush. Now you don't have that metal bar cover. Because metal is really easy to wipe down with a wet cloth if you catch your mess right away. You need to cover it with this cloth.
that. Cover. Get this out of the way. A little cover. Keep on cutting. Let me cover that up first. Actually, let me just make sure. I've got a little bit right there. You gotta clean as you go, guys. Bathroom primed up. Good, looking good. A lot brighter in here just with the primer on. But if you don't do the primer, when pencil marks like this will not get covered up by the paint. And uh, it would take three or four coats to cover this up. Watch this. A lot of people don't know this. But this right here is the painter's best friend. Get the extra paint out of your roller. Oh. Out. Let me go dump this in the, in the water. Come on, man. Clean this up as much as possible. Because sooner or later, it gets too thick and you gotta peel it off. Now, this one will hold two gallons. It's actually got a little magnet there. Those little temporary tin ones, they really, the ones your roller will barely fit in, those suck. Especially if you're doing big jobs. Because the other one you gotta fill up four times per gallon. This one you can drop two gallons in at a time. Saves the time. Okay, look at that. Let that baby dry in the sink. Here's yeast number, yeast number seven for the five one. Okay, then with the brush too. Use this fiber, it's five and one. Clean up the crusties. Now these brushes cost probably thirty-six dollars here. Raw mat. So you definitely want to keep them clean, which I do. I know some people charge the owner for for not having to clean up their shit and they just leave all their tools and brushes and you know what I mean they're just sloppy workers all right so before I get that one done I could also use it again oh ouch, that's hot water to clean it like this it really makes it a lot easier to clean All right, good morning. Morning, Steve. Morning, Grandma. Everyone. Uh, I didn't film yesterday because the battery was dead. But, um, got this all, um, single coated. Same with the bathroom and the living room. I mean, the bedroom. So it's looking pretty good. Gonna get these walls up done today. You can see I started over there over this way and uh, we'll continue on 
still needs another coat, but we'll make it look make it real, real good here. It's a lot cleaner. And I'll do some, <clears throat> fix some more patches down there. They were, I missed some holes, basically. Different light, different holes. <laughs> All right, let me get moving.
see the idea though, huh guys? And you want to make this line big enough that a roller can come up and not hit the ceiling and still get good coverage. Alright, don't want to bore you to death. <laughs> Alright, got our cut even down there. A little tiny bit. Get the heater in the wall. We're going to get ready to do some rolling. So, to cut in this wall, in this whole wall, two and a half hours to cut it in and to roll it. Um, and we gotta do it three times. So just these two walls is eight hours. <coughs> just to give you a little bit of clue. All right, well, um, you know what that means. Back to the bathroom do everything all over again <laughs> yeah three times every room three times all right see you in a bit Ugh. 
these mats will grab you. All right. Bathroom's done. Bedroom just got done. So, ah, you see, they'll, they'll fucking get you. Oh, man. This bad boy just got done. Second coat. So tomorrow I'll just bang this out. And that's it. All right, whatever. Let me get cleaning up on this. Oh man, I don't know. We're gonna have enough for this room. It's gonna be close. Look, that's all we got in the cup bucket. That might be enough for the whole room. And we got about a third of a can for this living room. Weesh. We'll see. See you tomorrow. Just about the angle there, come in there nice and light and soft and then squish out your brush. Carry it on up. Right. If you turn your brush around backwards like this and then push it up. You can make a square out of it, a right angle, in order to hit up those hard to reach right angles. There you go. There you go. Could use a smaller brush, but once you get the hang of it, it's not that hard. It's all about angle. And then, of course, the right amount of pressure on your brush so you don't leave streaks. Beauty. Let me take off the tape and clean up what mess I made. Got to do that immediately. And then on to the last two walls here. Hallelujah. Okay, she turned out good. Now, just got to put the electrical plates all on everywhere. Put all the books back on the shelf and put everything back where it was. I got a tiny, tiny bit of paint left. I'm going to do one more run on here and make three coats because this part was really beat up. So we'll put as much protection as we can and look, that's all we got left, guys. Maybe. <laughs> this place took almost exactly two gallons. All right. What do you think, Silva? Huh? Look good? You stay away from that wall. Come here. There you go. We don't need your hair on that wall. All right, all right. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. You tired of the Pyrenees out there? Too big for you? All right. All right, there you go, Steve. Hope you, hope you like it. I think it looks a bazillion times better. All right. There you go, Stevie. Got her done for you. I'm out of here. Everything's good. I got your bookshelf, your new bookshelf back. I haven't put up any uh, photos because I figure yeah, I can let you put the holes in the wall. All right, bud. Cheers. See you soon.